Welcome to St. Michael's online worship on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter, as we also celebrate Mother's Day in our country. together to worship the God who has called us to love and the God who caused us to follow God's direction we are invited to worship God in the spirit of truth we do so because we know the spirit and the spirit knows us we are reminded that we are not alone because the Holy Spirit is among us Jesus is with God and God is present. So let us rejoice that because he loves, we too love. And so let us pray. Loving God in whom we love and move and have our being, in these last days of Easter, we gather to recall the love that brought your son Jesus into this world and into our lives as savior, friend, and brother. On this Mother's Day, we thank you for all our mothers and for those who have been like mothers to us. And as we worship you this morning, open our eyes to your presence, open our ears to your word, receive the worship of our hearts and minds and bodies, and may it be pleasing to you. Amen. Amen. And we pray together the collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. As we move into a time of penitence, we hear those familiar words that Jesus spoke. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So let us confess our sins together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent of mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together the collect for the day. O oh God, you, you reveal yourself in love. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever, forever and, ever. and ever. Amen. We now listen to the Word of God. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, beginning at verse 15. Glory to Christ our Saviour. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long the world will not see me any more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Greetings, friends. Let us pray. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are nearing the end of Eastertide, as this coming Thursday we commemorate the Feast of Christ's Ascension. The Paschal candle in some churches is extinguished on this day, symbolizing the disappearance of Christ from human sight. Other churches prefer to extinguish it at Pentecost. In any event, these two festivals, the Feast of the Ascension and the Feast of Pentecost, represent the culmination of the season of Easter and with the arrival of the Holy Spirit, the ushering in of the season of Pentecost. What then are we to say on this, the last normal Sunday of Easter tide? What do our readings say? Our Gospel reading comes from the farewell discourse of the Gospel of John, where Jesus is preparing his disciples for his imminent departure. Of course, this departure is in the form of his crucifixion and death in John chapter 14, but the content here is applicable also preceding Jesus' ascension. The prospect of Jesus' departure occasions anxiety among the disciples, and so part of Jesus' intention is to allay their fears. In doing so, he says that he will not leave them as orphans, but that he will send the Holy Spirit, or to use John's terminology, the advocate or helper, 
to be with them forever. So the passage is doubly relevant, for it speaks not only of Jesus' departure, now in the form of his ascension, but also of the arrival of the Holy Spirit, Spirit, with Pentecost immediately following Ascension Day. And there were always recurring motifs as we move through the liturgical calendar. Ascension Day is not unlike the Feast of Christ the King, which, if you like, is the Old Year's equivalent, Old Year's Eve equivalent in our liturgical calendar. It is the culmination of the whole liturgical cycle, but both feasts, both the Feast of the Ascension and the Feast of Christ the King, speak to the sovereign rule or reign of Christ. And this sovereign reign may also be seen as the realization of, or fulfillment of Jesus' earthly proclamation, namely the imminent arrival of the kingdom of God. John is also different from the Synoptic Gospels in so many ways. For example, for John, the lifting up or ascension of Jesus, which is also, his, which is also Jesus' hour of glory, is Jesus lifting up on the cross, his crucifixion. And as we saw a few weeks ago, John's Pentecost takes place not 50 days after the resurrection, but on the same day of the resurrection. Given where we are, though, in our liturgical calendar, in this transitionary period between Easter and Pentecost, where we at the same time focus on the heavenly rule or reign of Christ, there is a sense of the fulfillment of God's plan of salvation. Ascension Day represents the end of Christ's earthly ministry, meaning that whatever he could and did achieve through his earthly ministry, this is now complete. And in some sense, he now hands the reins over to us, empowering and equipping us most crucially through the Holy Spirit. In one of our readings set for this Sunday from Acts chapter 17, Paul, in his speech in front of the Areopagus, summarizes the fulfillment of God's plan of salvation as follows. He says, while God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, he now commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. That man, of course, is now the risen and soon to be ascended Jesus Christ, our Lord. And though for many the resurrection itself was an implausible event, Paul uses it here as a proof of God's plan of salvation, proof that God has assigned a day when all creation will be judged by Jesus Christ. And in Luke's account of the ascension in Acts chapter 2, the disciples suffer from what might be referred to as heavenly gaze syndrome. And I sometimes wonder whether we too do not suffer from this from time to time, the same condition, heavenly gaze syndrome, where we are so overly concerned about things of heaven and things of the spirit that we forget about earthly matters. We should also take into account the fact that our conceptions about God or of God are human conceptions, understood through human frames of reference. Remember that in Jesus' day, for Jews living in that time, whatever else the long-awaited Messiah would embody, he would at least be a Davidic figure who would grant them political liberation from their Roman oppressors. This was part of their expectation of who the Messiah would be, and as a result, they could not accept Jesus as their Messiah. In a similar way, we as the church over the last two millennia have been forced to reconceive the quality of God, the nature and quality of God's kingdom. While not overtly political, does it still not have a bearing on political spheres? While not evidently physical, does it not encroach from time to time upon the physical realm? And without wishing to foreshadow too much our reflections for the Feast of the Ascension, one theological implication which we can uh, consider in closing and which I feel is helpful to mention is that because of what is referred to as the two natures of Christ, the doctrine of the two natures of Christ, namely that he should necessarily be both fully human and fully divine, the net result of the ascension as Christ assumes his rightful place 
at the right hand of God and as one of the three persons of the Trinity, the net result of his ascension is the incorporation or assumption of humanity within and into the Godhead, which on one level is undoubtedly a signal of the full realization of God's plan of salvation, humanity or humankind being incorporated through Christ's ascension into the Godhead. And so in light of this and in light of the promise Jesus makes this Sunday not to leave us as orphans, but to send the Holy Spirit in his stead to guide, empower and equip us, surely we must acknowledge that we've been given everything we need to fully realize the plan of God's salvation for humankind. And so, as we, and so we pray as we enter the season, as we end the season of Easter, that we would not neglect our day of salvation, but that God would awaken us to everything we have been given in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so let us affirm our faith in, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of, of heaven and, and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Christ commands us to show our love for him and for the Father by loving one another. By our love, the power of Christ's resurrection is made known to the world. Let us now turn to the Father with our prayers for the Church and for the world. Loving Lord, we pray for your Church throughout the world. We ask you to fill us with your love, love in our thinking, love in our speaking, and love in our doing. Bless and protect your people in a world where many false gods, known and unknown, are worshipped. Give your saints a clear and bold proclamation of Jesus Christ and embolden your church as your followers to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. Guiding God, we pray for public officials, politicians, and all who serve the public day by day. Guide each leader to uphold standards of good service above personal gain. Give them wisdom to make faithful decisions and courage when their, de their decisions are unpopular. Create a spirit of cooperation and understanding among our leaders, especially those used to emphasizing differences and opposing each other so that our country and communities can flourish again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, you have given us a mirror of your love in the vocation of mothers who nurture, guide, and raise their children in all things good. Bless them in their calling. Sustain them through weary and difficult times. Remember in compassion all who are barren and bring them comfort through the children of your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you promise not to abandon us in our need, nor leave us as orphans. Send forth your spirit and work through us, your people, that the lonely, the poor, the homeless may rejoice in your presence and the power of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we pray for those who are suffering from illness or chronic conditions, for those in grief or loneliness, 
and for any who feel frustrated or overwhelmed by what they face. In particular, we pray for those who have lost a motherly presence and for those who have never known a mother's love. May they find consolation in God, the one in whom every family on earth finds its home. Move and in each and every life with your healing grace and show signs of your presence and compassion in life-giving ways to all who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for your faithful servants who have gone before us and pray for their families and all whose life is saddened by the death of loved ones. Be with them in their loneliness that they may know that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. Loving God, be their comfort and source of strength as their hearts ache in bereavement and loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God our Father, we thank you for the love which you have shown us through the sacrifice of your Son Jesus and pray that we be ever blessed with the gift of Christ's abiding presence in our lives. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 And now we pray a prayer over the offering. God of love and provision, in deep gratitude for life and for all the blessings that come from you, we offer back to you some measure of what we have been given. Accept our offerings and use them and use us for the building up of your kingdom in this world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as for Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. And the final blessing. Friends, now leave this time of worship, refreshed and hopeful, and let love be true and freely given. And may you be encouraged and blessed by the Advocate, whose love warms and surrounds you like the sun. 
believing that God is with us always as close as our beating hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and with all those whom you love. Amen. Amen. And our friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In, in the, the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.